What's up everybody, Brian Tong here and Apple hints that there could be an iPhone that's another level above the iPhone Pro series. We're just gonna call it Ultra. The next Mac 3 upgrade might not be happening this year, plus Apple Watch 10 rumors and more. But let's start off with the juiciest stuff. You know, if you had to imagine what an iPhone Ultra might look like, you don't have to anymore after these incredible concept renders from Jonas Daynert take inspiration from the Apple Watch Ultra. It's titanium finish, it's round curves, it's flat screen. It looks so nice, but there's now real evidence backing up that Apple is really looking to go ultra. A new, even higher-end iPhone could be coming after CEO and friend of the channel, Mr. Tim Cook, made comments during Apple's recent Q1 earnings call. He was asked about whether the iPhone's rising average sales price was sustainable, and he responded by saying, I think people are willing to really stretch to get the best they can afford in that category. Translation, Price increase really isn't a problem and people would be willing to pay more because the iPhone has become so integral to their lives. You know Apple sees all the data and this year could be the biggest test to see if that holds true because the expectation is that the iPhone 15 Pro Max will be the only iPhone to bring a periscope camera lens system for an improved optical zoom at up to 6x according to the rumor mills. And it will be limited only to Apple's highest end iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now we know the Galaxy Ultra lineup has had an impressive 10X optical zoom since the S21 Ultra three years ago. And iPhone users, you have no idea what you're all missing because there is now a clear line between the standard and pro models for the iPhone today. And then the new 15 Pro Max would let Apple really see if people will make the jump that they normally wouldn't and pay more for the Pro Max with that key distinguishing camera feature. Now, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman claims Apple has internally talked about adding a higher-end iPhone to the top of its smartphone lineup. Gurman reports that Apple wants to draw a greater distinction between the Pro and the Pro Max models and will go for a new top-end brand called Ultra. And you know, we've already seen Ultra used in its top-end Apple Watch and with their top-end M1 processor. So even the naming makes sense. And Samsung fans are like, hey, we came up with the Ultra first. Well, guess what? Apple has discussed bringing the Ultra tier to the iPhone lineup potentially in time for the 2024 iPhone release. Not this year, my friends, but 2024. So you don't have to worry about it yet, but does the word pro, does it really mean anything anymore? I mean, the Ultra could be the, think of it as the concept car for the iPhone, bringing a top of the line camera, a faster chip, maybe an even larger or higher quality display and features like getting rid of the charging port because we are really at a point where phones are just so good, they're so mature that we don't really need to upgrade them nearly as often as we did you know, a few years ago. And I'm not gonna lie, as a content creator who is locked in this ecosystem, you tell me that there's a better camera in the highest, highest end iPhone and optical zoom up to 5X, 6X, which yes, Samsung has had, but the iPhone doesn't. Um, I'm gonna get it. And you know, I've avoided getting the Pro Max all these years, even if it has great battery life and a larger screen because it's just honestly too big for my skinny jean pockets. Not my hands, I got big hands. But I'd be the first to tell you that I'd be willing to throw that out the window if a top-end Ultra lives up to its name and is an Ultra iPhone. Now you also have to listen to Tim Cook carefully because he's just always been a lot more transparent with his comments. He's been talking about Apple and emphasizing augmented reality openly in multiple interviews for years now. And we are finally expecting to see Apple's headset released this year. So if he's hinting about room for another iPhone in the lineup at that top end, come on, Apple's seriously looking at it and expect to see that sooner rather than later. And remember, yes, Samsung had larger screen sizes for phones and then Apple resisted, but then decided to go with multiple screen sizes and it's worked out for them. Samsung has the high-end Ultra series and now Apple's looking to go Ultra itself. Samsung has foldable phones and they command a premium price and Apple has looked at foldable phones as well, but. We don't expect an Apple foldable phone anytime soon. But what we do know is that there is still more room for Apple to go if they want to. And you know what? You got to give Samsung all the credit for pushing those trends. But guess what? It still always comes down to the power of the ecosystem, right? Apple can be patient. Let the market show them where things are going and then go for it when Apple is ready on their own timeline because they know they have the user base that is sticking with them in their ecosystem. And as time goes on, those users get even deeper with maybe an Apple Watch and then they get a Mac or an iPad and then Apple One services. I mean, <laughs> if, if you're on Apple One, then you are in deep, like deep, deep. 
So there's still more to talk about, but hey, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Trend Micro. Trend Micro's premium security suite is their flagship product, and it gives you complete device and identity protection for you and your family. Maximum security covers your PCs and Macs 24 seven, and mobile security covers your Android and iOS devices. Now Trend Micro's premium security suite is the most comprehensive security solution you'll need covering up to 10 devices you get Wi-Fi protection that turns a public hotspot into a secure connection via a virtual private network, and it encrypts communications once you're connected, so it ensures your privacy. So this is key for me since, you know, I'm always traveling, and I want to know I'm safe using random hotspots because we have all jumped on that random one just thirsty for the Wi-Fi. Hey, don't tell me you haven't. Now, the Premium Security Suite is an easy-to-download app on all your devices, then you just log in and you're protected. ID security provides dark web monitoring, it blocks dangerous and malicious websites, and the security suite includes Password Manager that gives you simple and secure password management. And Premium Service gives you a personal help desk for all things technical. Now Trend Micro's Premium Security Suite works on PC, Mac, iOS, and Android devices, so go and download it today. All right, back to the stories, and let's just keep on talking Macs because Apple's new M2 Max and M2 Pro MacBook Pro and Mac Mini, they've been out for, geez, just a couple weeks now, and I've been hoping that, you know, we'd get an M2 Ultra Mac Studio after seeing the results from my video render test on the M2 Max on the new MacBook Pro. But in Mark Gurman's latest Power On newsletter, he says that since the new upcoming Mac Pro will be similar in functionality to the Mac Studio with its new M2 Ultra chip, Apple might wait until the M3 or M4 generation to give it a refresh so that Mac Studio really needs time to better differentiate it from this coming Mac Pro. And that's not what I wanted to hear as a content creator because we know the Mac Pro typically offers more expansion and customization, but once reports of them scrapping an M2 Extreme chip on that high end for the Mac Pro happened, uh, you know, it made this move seem more likely. And while I'm talking about it, this is what most of you are all saying through the screen. What about a 27 inch iMac? Yeah, um, it's still crickets on that front too. All right now, are you ready for the Apple Watch Series X or 10? But saying X is cooler when it's really 10. Well, a new report from Omdia Research claims Apple will release this so-called Apple Watch 10 with a larger display and a third generation Apple Watch SE in 2024. Now it's not officially being called the 10, but the report says its display sizes will be a 1.89 inch display and a 2.04 inch display, which would be five to 10% larger than the current Apple Watch Series 8, depending on the case size that you're getting. Now the third generation Apple Watch SE would then bump up to the same display size as the Apple Watch Series 8 in 2024. And the expectation is that this year's Apple Watch Series 9 will retain the same display size as the Series 8. Now we know there are multiple reports that claim the next Apple Watch Ultra 2 will bring an even larger display, going from its current 1.92 inch screen to a 2.13 inch screen, and will reportedly use a new micro LED display. That would bring better brightness, deeper colors, more power efficiency, and this new display on the Ultra is reportedly planned for 2024, but rumor and reports still haven't ruled out at least an updated Ultra 2 for this year, not yet at least. Now this new micro LED display technology that's rumored for 2024 or 2025 would be linked up with an Apple Watch Ultra 3 or Ultra 4, but the latest report from Ross Young is claiming that new display tech appears to be arriving in 2025. And I'm still really waiting for just some major new health sensors to give that Apple Watch lineup a jolt. Maybe SOS emergency via satellite will be the next big feature for Apple Watch before we get those, but that's not what most people are waiting on. I mean, look, the health sensors, that is what's really gonna spark the next big upgrade cycle. Okay, let's jump over to the iPhone because according to a new report from 9to5Mac, Apple is still developing the reverse wireless charging feature that would allow the back of an iPhone to charge other devices like AirPods. Now, earlier reports had the feature planned for the 14 Pro, but it wasn't finalized in time, so we never saw it. Reverse wireless charging rumors started as far back as the iPhone 11, and we've even seen FCC filings of components that would support it in the iPhone, but right now, we still just have MagSafe charging. But don't get too excited. The feature could be delayed again or scrapped entirely, but it's not dead yet. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! Okay, South Korea's ET News says Samsung and LG factories are preparing for mass production of the first 
OLED displays for Apple's iPad. Now, display analyst Ross Young has reported that Apple is planning to bring OLED to a new 13-inch MacBook Air, an 11.1-inch iPad Pro, and 13-inch iPad Pro in 2024. All the devices are expected to support ProMotion with that 120 hertz refresh rate, and the first MacBook with OLED is expected to launch next year as well. So, see, we can go back and watch this video in a year and see how good the rumor mills are because they're getting so detailed that we're getting info as far as a year in advance or now even two these days. I mean, I do think it's a little silly because look, many things can change that far down the line, but we're still all interested in it and we are so into it. And that's why I keep on making these videos. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up and hit that notification bell ding to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks again for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace and love.